There's something happening here What it is ain't exactly clear There's a man with a gun over there Telling me, well I've got to be with Think it's time we stop Children, what's that sound? Everybody, what's going down? So my name is Mike. Everyone knows me as Hippie Mike. I'm 42 years old and I've been a skateboarder since 1986. So I've skateboarded for 35 years. I think I've been a skateboarder for life, my whole life. It wasn't really skate parks where we were in Ontario. Big boards and big wheels and everybody was just bombing around in the streets. Obviously skateboarding had a bit of a bad rap in the 80s and 90s where people kind of turned against it, pushed those people aside. They were like, you know, oh, you're a skateboarder? I remember having skateboarding on my resume as a hobby and being told I'm not gonna get an interview because of it. And I was like, well, then I'm definitely leaving it on my resume. So it was around 2014 and I was doing some, some blunts and some pivots and stuff. And as I was riding away, my leg just kept turning out of joint and I dislocated my knee a few times in the past. I went through three surgeries in four years all on the same leg. I'd hurt myself so many times and never dealt with it properly that my leg was really messed up and I, I knew my knee was semi-destroyed. He said you have no ACL and your tibia bone is warped so if you want me to replace the ACL you have to let me break your tibia bone and straighten it. I had to recover, I had to get strong, and in that time I decided to move from Surrey. And we had our second child and we moved out to Sunshine Valley. So we've been in the Hope area for about five and a half years. My name is Carrie Williams and I'm married to Michael, AKA Hippie Mike. You know, I was running a store right in the heart of Wally, Authentic Board Supply, and it was like constantly dealing with crime and people and just busyness and I was just sick of it. In Sunshine Valley, there's only like 200 people that live there. So I could get away from everybody and have peace and quiet to recoup. So I went in for the surgery. So here I am now, I can't walk for probably five months. Another year later, I went into the Bowl Series contest that I go into every Canada Day. And two days later, broke my ankle at my house. I was at the point where I could hardly walk. And I don't think that people um, really knew how bad it was. I know for Mike, skateboarding is his passion. And when you lose that, for a time because you're injured and you don't necessarily know how or when you're gonna bounce back. It's, it's very depressing, so you're dealing with a lot of emotional stress. I think I was more mentally depressed than anything. The pain wasn't in my ankle at that time, it was in my head. Like, are you kidding me? That I have to go through this again. During that time, I was just like, I need to take the stress out of it. 
And at the same time, I had a bunch of people that were bugging me to teach their kids how to skateboard, like usual. So I said, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach a couple lessons. So I, I built a really small group of kids. I think there was three or four. And Kaelin was helping me at the Hope Skate Park. And I started teaching lessons again. And just having that feeling of watching these kids learn and seeing what it meant to them was what I had been missing. And that's kind of what put me back into this mode of like, you know, maybe one of my purposes in life is to be that guy that provides opportunity to everyone else and helps grow these, this next generation in a positive way, right? And so I started um, kind of thinking towards indoor skate park. And Carrie said to me, she said, well, why don't you try and do something in hopes? Like, you should check out that, that Rona building. It's just been sitting there empty for like two years, right? So I was like, yeah, totally. I knew the realtor that was the guy leasing it. So I called him, I said, take me in the Rona building. I want to see it. We walked through the building, the roof was pouring rain. Oh, what condition the building was in. It was rough, man. It was rough. The roof was leaking, holes in the walls. It looked like shit. <laughs> and glue stuck things here. It, it's just a mess. And you just go, all right. Mike came in and he's like, I want to show you this space that I'm going to build the skate park in. I can still hear the water falling in through the ceiling in the corner while he was explaining it to me to this day. My name's AJ Zabel. I'm from Sunshine Valley, British Columbia. Some might call me the lead staff member at HMI, but I don't think of myself that way. I think of myself more as a caretaker of what we're creating and what we have created. This building had not been used for a long time. It needed new life, just like I did. The second I walked in the door, the second I walked in the door, I knew I was building an indoor skate park. I could see it on October 6th, 2020, and I locked the door myself as we left with my new key. And the fundraising began. I had no idea how I was even going to pay the deposit that was due like in two days. I felt excited, but I also knew the reality of it. I just believed that people were going to help. People were just offering everything to me. Like, can they come and sweep? Can they come and paint? Can they come help build ramps? It almost seemed like we had an infinite number of hands reaching out to try and help us. One of the biggest contributions we got was from Jamie Davis Towing, who helped us with the material, the raw material we needed in order to actually bring the park to life. So now I had 432 20 foot 2x4s all of a sudden. You know how many 2x4s I had before that? Zero. And that was what really started the ability to build this place. And over the time, they donated 650 2x4s and like 200 and something sheets of OSB that we use for walls and ceilings and all kinds of stuff. Uh, like 50 semi-truck tires that we used in the floor of the jiu-jitsu studio. Right now, we are sitting in uh, my gym, uh, which is Pacific Top Team Hope BC. Uh, this is built in the compound of HMI, and uh, just like HMI, it started from very humble beginnings. We were an outdoor shack that we have converted uh, into a, uh, a gym with a lot of uh, donated materials and uh, a lot of I don't know what I'm doing. I am Christian Powa. My kids' names are Mac Anthony Powa and Marlon Powa. They are both students at uh, HMI.
We started off with building this section of the park first. Uh, this is kind of the lesson section or the beginner section. One of our biggest purposes of HMI Skate Park is teaching the next generation how to skateboard or creating another generation of skateboarders in a smaller town. So I, I would have met Mike at around age seven. Hippie Mike was one of the instructors for the city of Surrey. He might have been the actual sole instructor for the city of Surrey at that time. <laughs> he like made the whole uh, skateboard lesson thing a thing. You can obviously see how this park is designed to build skateboarders up from the ground up, right? I think the first memories of skateboarding is probably in my old kitchen. Like one day I found my dad's skateboard because he left it laying around the house. I just found it and started trying to get on it and it was before I could walk. As you can see, we have a really small mini ramp. Mellow transitions. It's good for learning how to drop in. If you want to, you can do transfers from the extension into the wall ride. We got some big, mean flat banks mixed in with the small ramps. Dude. The flow here is unreal. One of the first things I built was this ledge. This ledge is actually a key piece of this place. Almost every kid that learns how to skateboard here learns how to just roll off this ledge. And if you're already good, well then you can do manual tricks straight up and straight down. So this ramp here was, um, you know, is the centerpiece of the park. This was the very first thing that we built. We opened the store in this section on December 15th. I had a couple guys come and help me, like Tashi and Raiden and, and Britt from 5 -0. And they just came in and helped me, what do you need, what do you need? Literally built this ramp in four days. It's not a big ramp in height, but I didn't want a big ramp right here. I wanted something that anyone could ride. Once again, kids can learn on. Uh, guys that already know how to skate can have fun on. And, and people that are really good can do really hard technical tricks. Okay, what the hell's going on over here? Thank God we got this little ledge. Not only is it good to skate off of, but when you're floating this way real fast, or even skating over there and you slip out, it stops boards from going into the bowl. Personally, I like the palm trees. I think that's the sweetest touch, dude. So this was the uh, second section that we built. This, this actually used to go downstairs from the other section to this section. We framed it all up to five feet high. This was basically our street section. We got a flat bank. We've got, this is the pit as I call it. Uh, we got a couple little wall rides there. We got a step up. This rail here is actually from the old RDS park. This blue rail was something that we recycled from a different part of the building. My friends Chris McRae and Darian Morardi, they cut it all up and welded it into this awesome rail. And then Andy 5050 grinded the entire thing into a wall ride to make sure it worked. So that was pretty awesome. This place is catered to make skateboarding skateboarding for real. So you learn how to deal with angles. You learn how to deal with whoops. Because they're in real life, they, they, they exist. That's the thing about skateboarding, is that the, the pinnacle isn't a soccer field. It's not a pristine thing that's been groomed for skateboarding on. This is what breeds real skateboarders. Now, this bowl ain't anything regular. The entire bowl framed, so the top decks were in, and it was just a big hole there. But I was using existing corners, which is very difficult. So I took the corners from a bowl in RDS Park, and then added my own coping to it, but I had to build the bowl to the corners. So normally, I would build from the bottom up. On this bowl, I actually built it from the top down, which was way, way harder. <laughs> this big wall right here, where the yellow coping is on the top, is 11 feet off the ground. Keith, a Hope Local, he, uh, as soon as I put that coping on, he donated $100 and said, whoever can grind it first wins the $100. Then you come out of that, <laughs> go over here. <laughs> like it, the whole park feeds into itself. That's, what, that's what's so trippy about skateboarding. I've been skating for 21 years now. I was in the frickin' Olympics competing, and I could still learn 100 tricks on that tiny ramp. Like, it, it, you never, obstacles never, you don't grow out of them. 
they're just there for something else, for something new. So one of the coolest things about building this place was um, coming in with absolutely no money and just knowing that somehow I was going to make it work and I knew that I'd be able to find materials and, and people would help out. So for instance, this whole mini ramp, other than the two by fours, was built out of a ramp that I already had at my house. So the biggest person donating that really kicked in hard was uh, Jamie Davis Towing and big thanks to Gord that works for Jamie Davis that kind of set that up. Amix donated all the extra coping I needed that I didn't already have. And New Line Skate Parks actually donated a full lift of plywood. Andy Anderson's dad, Paul, he donated a whole bunch of birch plywood that we used as top sheeting underneath the masonite on top of some old platforms. He also donated all the flooring that we used throughout the buildings. My friend Jamie Medill, he owns a restoration company. Just, you know, open cans of paint that are just sitting there. No one's gonna use it, but here you go. Perfect. Just everybody was there to help. They made it possible for us to actually cut up and screw our dreams together. Everything that we did in here was recycling and reusing and taking materials that were doing nothing and putting them to use. So all those people together are who built this park. I just did the work. To have all those people wanting to be a part of the project I was creating, we built it as a family. It means a lot. A couple other people I wanted to thank was Braille Skateboards and First Try Foundation. They donated a bunch of money when we first opened up towards getting kids into our programs. And Fraser Health has also done the same thing recently where these guys are funding money towards our programming for the kids that can't afford it, right? So we get equipment out of that we buy completes, we buy helmets, we buy pads that all the kids can use, and then certain kids get to come and take the lessons that wouldn't normally be able to afford it. So it's very beneficial to Hope um, and the kids in Hope that maybe wouldn't be able to try skateboarding on their own and, and their parents, maybe they do have enough money to buy a board, but they also gotta buy groceries and they're like, I don't know how serious my kid's gonna be yet, so if they can just try it out first, that really helps. And so huge thanks to, to Braille, to the First Try Foundation, and to Fraser Health for, for helping us out with that. It's, it's massive. So one of my friends, Paul Kaji, passed away a few years ago and he lived in Hope at the time. And uh, his mom, Linda, she's such a nice lady. She's just one of the sweetest, kindest, most generous women, humans ever. She would come around to the skate park while I was teaching lessons at the outdoor skate park. And she would just bring things. She would bring complete skateboards or pizza or whatever else. Yeah, I'm Linda Kadji. I had a call from Hippie Mike saying that he was thinking of renting out the old Rona um, store and building this skateboard park. I said, what do you need? And um, I'm behind you. So I, I did a donation and um, yeah, and Hippie Mike just started building. Paul Kadji. He was one of my best buddies um, before Mike moved into Hope. Well, Paulie, he was here. When Paul was young, he started skateboarding and he met a lot of great people skateboarding and those friends he had until the day he died. And the fact that he can't be with us to experience this um, 
having Linda Kaji is just like, it just makes it that much more important to me and to Mike because he was our friend. In Linda's donation, part of it was we built a memorial for her son, Paul Kaji. The mural back here is, came from a picture of my son and it shows that skateboarders never die. Skateboarders live on, and I'm sure his spirit is here today. From the second we put this mural up, you could feel his presence in this building. And, and Paul was, um, he was one of those guys that just, you know, he was always at the skate park, watching the kids learn and just having himself being part of their lives and like whatever they're doing just pumping them up being positive cheering you know he was a great guy and the eat sleep skate that says everything about paul that's who he was yeah eat sleep skate it spreads the energy that her son used to spread you know, we look up, see his big mural, and his pictures on our wall, the Eat, Sleep, Skate. It's that energy. Just to have Linda a part of this, where she can see a bit of her son in every kid that rides. Paul would be very, very proud. I know he was there in spirit. I just know that this place means a lot to her, the same that it means a lot for me to have her as part of it. And I think it's wonderful, something good for the kids. I think he's a big part of um, all the people donating, like that whole energy, you know? Because his mom started it. I think one of the coolest things about skateboarding, and I see this in a lot of young kids, is they learn how to set goals at a young age and battle their way through to win that battle. One of my favorite things about teaching kids anything is to be determined to succeed. All the kids come here, the families find this place as like a, somewhere in between like a school and, and like a, an activity where they're like shuttled off to go be on a team, right? It's like a place where the kids are finding individuality. All right, go for it. So being one of the main instructors at HMI is very humbling and super awesome at the same time. It's probably like the best thing that's ever happened to me. You like walk in here and the atmosphere is just like, come skate, we'll help you, we'll teach you. You can learn from anyone and everyone. There's a lot of support just to grow and there's a lot of education and trying to just get kids who necessarily wouldn't be able to skateboard before, I wouldn't have an interest in it, to now have an opportunity to skateboard. Some kids, you know, they pick it up and they put it right back down. They're like, that is not for me. And then you see a kid that picks it up and whether they land it or crash right off the bat, you know they're in it for a long time. My name is Mac. I started taking lessons with Mike, Hippie Mike. They found something new that mattered to them and exactly they can express themselves. What do you want to be? Just a skater that has fun. Kevin Harris is the first ever Canadian professional skateboarder. He was such a huge influence in so many people's lives growing up. And the next generation that I see is Andy Anderson. There's no difference in my mind between an Andy Anderson and Rodney Mullen and Tony Hawk. He's a game changer. Yeah, it's like when I was seven and I started skating with Mike doing these lessons, that's when I knew I was going to skate for the rest of my life. And there's a lot of kids yesterday that you can see that they're lifers 
you know? And the, these relationships that they're building here are lifelong relationships. My name's Sean Sue, and my two kids, Benton, who's six, and my daughter, Megan, who's nine. We drive out here from Surrey. Like, skateboarding has helped Benton and Megan succeed in other areas in life. It's helped her confidence grow in like a social aspect and in school and just like having the confidence to interact with other people. It's so important to put yourself in danger all the time and to, to deal with challenges and to deal with pain and hurt and success. Skateboarding gives you these, all these things. And I think part of the goal for me as a HMI instructor is pushing them in a, in a healthy way. The kids really, you know, in the lessons, they just look up to the staff with stars in their eyes and they, they have a great time and they repeat. They keep coming back for lessons and they keep coming back just to see the staff. Nice, little turns, yep. Dude, that was awesome, Emily. I feel like those kids, like, they're taking something as much as I'm giving them something and they are giving me back something that I'm taking. It's like, um, it's an exchange. To have kids scream out my name, Johnny, yo, what's up? As an instructor, that's just like, it gets you right here. And it's awesome. As Soon as it gets right up over the coping, just put a little bit of pressure on your tail and lean back in. Good job, Evan. There's three instructors here at HMI that are all in their youth. So we have Raiden, Kelsey, and Kaylin. Where I can teach an adult through language and motions because I'm similar to them, a kid can teach kids skateboarding from a kid's viewpoint, which makes more sense sometimes. I think that when kids teach other kids, they're building each other up, which leads to, to leading. I didn't know you could do that. That's pretty cool. You think you can do it over here? Oh yeah, you can. Go. That was great. That was all off the ground. That was perfect. I like teaching because it gives me a chance to have fun with them when I'm teaching them and really get to know them and just try and have fun with them. I was really good. Pound it. It made me feel like I had a purpose here. Like I was a part of something. Like I finally felt like I had a home. I felt at home here. And then to teach kids what I learned, it's been an amazing experience. The vibe is kind of like, nobody's really trying to impress anybody and everyone's just trying to have fun. One of the other kids is Charlie. Watching Charlie grow here was really cool. He's become so involved. I got another kid to go ask him for help. And I was like, I gotta do this right now. But that guy over there, he's 100% gonna help you if you're willing to go ask. And that little girl walked over there and asked him. While he was laying on the ground smiling at himself, uh, he had tried something and fallen down and was ready to get back up. He said, absolutely. He put his board down and he helped her learn to drop in. And it was like, this is that ripple effect I was talking about earlier, right? We help them, they help the next person, right? There you go. The confidence that my kids leave with is something that we don't experience much anywhere else. Like, you can guarantee that every time we leave, we leave with a smile on our face and feeling positive about ourselves. I think 20 years from now, though, that those kids are gonna go on to do great things because of this experience. We're teaching these kids uh, different ways to express themselves, to fight their own battles. We're also teaching them to not fight them negatively, right? Sometimes you might, you know, get upset and angry while you're trying to learn something new or do something that you've done a million times. But that's also part of life and you have to get through that. If you can go to bed that night and say, I won or I'm gonna win tomorrow because I haven't won yet, you never give up. That's the mentality. If we teach the next generation to never give up, we're building the right type of people. The 
backyard bash will never be forgotten. If we threw this event the other day, the Backyard Bash. This crazy, wild mix of homemade ramps and just wild. It smelled fries being cooked and like the energy was just really fun. It seemed like it was put on and organized by like a city or something. It was so crazy here. That, that vibe was just so awesome and the event was just by far the coolest. Everybody was seen, everybody was heard. I had a blast. I was seen. I got to play music. I never get to play music. That's sweet. Other kids were seen. I think everybody almost walked out of there with a prize. I won that board. So everybody walked away with something. And for myself and Mike and for everybody else, I think that's important. For me, it seems more familiar. I grew up with events like that that Hippie was thrown every other weekend. So for me, I'm like, yes, finally, something like this again. But for a lot of the people the other day, I was like their first event like that. You know, with that true love, that true passion. It's the roots of skateboarding, right? Like here's Hippie Mike building all these really cool obstacles in the back. Like this is community. This is family. This is like, not like going to watch a baseball game. The reason that the event was such a hit and was such a highlight of the summer for a lot of the kids and the adults was that we were all having a good time. I don't think anything about that day could have a negative. For hope, is like to see so many people come out from other places and from around town and come out and cheer on those kids and those other skaters. Really goes beyond competition, you know, because everybody's a participant. Everybody's in it. Everybody's part of the community. They're not watching the community, you know. Well, I think what's been created, and I think a big part of Mike's goal is about creating community. I know personally it's been wonderful for our family and for myself, and I can see it's been great for everyone else. They're just making connections, so they're, they're building this community and, and having these ties and these strengths together now through this place and the space to do it. It's kind of surprising that a lot of people really started to like skateboarding once we had this place. People are gravitating to it from all walks of life, right? We get dads, we get moms, we get people who are just like off the street trying to poke their head in and see what's going on, right? It feels like it's like a clubhouse here. It's like anybody can just drop in and hang out. You don't have to even skateboard. Like you can just come out and shoot pool, chill out. Film your friends, just eat some pizza, and listen to some good music and good vibes. Just teenagers coming in off the street, right? And now that there's a place where they're accepted and they're not just being turned away because of their age or whatever, it's really like made a, a huge impact on them. Otherwise they would just be sitting at home or like walking around doing nothing. You open up your doors here, well if you weren't open, what would that kid be doing right now? Like, if it's raining outside, the kid's definitely at home playing games, computer games around his phone. Well, now he's got an activity that he loves to do and to go do it. So more things like this need to happen. This is a huge asset to Hope, having something where the kids can just walk here, skate here. My favorite thing is, is seeing my friends at each of my people. I didn't really um, meet that much people when when I didn't, when I didn't start skating, that I really liked to meet, and that changed. I think for those kids to see a lot of us that grew up in Hope skateboarding here since we were their age, and seeing how our friendship is just as strong as it ever was, it's it gives them something where they can be like the friends I make here at HMI are probably going to be my lifelong skate friends. And it's plain to see what we're all about in the community-driven positive support and safe space. Our female ratio in HMI skate park is like 25%. It's huge. 
It's, it's really great to see how many young women come out to HMI. I get more women joining jujitsu um, right now than I do men. Skateboarding really taught me that it doesn't really matter what I'm doing or who's watching. It's, it's not about that. It's, it's building enough confidence to just do it for you. And I think seeing young women gain that for themselves and, and watching them get more confident as they learn more things and feeling better about themselves and being confident in that it doesn't matter if they're as good as anyone else, they can do their own thing. Like my daughter wouldn't wouldn't be at the level she's at with skateboarding without being here and seeing how many other like positive female roles there are in this place. So I brought my youngest daughter in, she's 11, and put her in lessons and that was it. Now we're here all the time. She kept encouraging me, wanted me to try, try it with her. Finally I was like, yeah, it looks like a lot of fun because I would sit here and read a book or just sit and watch and I just had to try it. Her and I had a hard time too finding something we like to do together and until we both took up skateboarding and now it's like we just skate together all the time. We practice in our garage sometimes. This is like community building 101. This is here to stay and it's what a fantastic thing for the community. It brings people every day to our small town and it brings tourism and business to everything around. We can be ambassadors for hope in this area as well and bring more people in. Go to the gas station, they go to the restaurants, they come and eat food, they come and stay overnight, they stay in motels and then they tell everybody else that they know like, hey, you gotta go to Hope. It's super gorgeous and fun and there's this indoor skateboard park. HMI Skate Park is one of those things that introduces people to this thing that people need, which is love and compassion and trust and humanity and community. And it presents it in a way that they can see and they can be a part of and they can contribute to. It's really powerful stuff. It goes way beyond skateboarding. You know, people might just think that I'm starting another business to make money or this this skate park wasn't about that at all. It was literally about my mental well-being and where I needed to be again. And also, what do I have to offer other people? I think the more that you give in life, the more that comes back to you, right? That's the karma side. And I think that that was part of the energy that came back to me here. And it's just you and your board. Nobody's telling you what to do and no one's telling you what not to do. There's something happening here. I think that freedom is something that everybody's always searching it for and exactly clear. skateboarding, you can find it in there. With a gun over there. The very first skateboard that came to me, the very first time I rode it, that's like in my memory because it, it, it was something about it, the minute I stood it, I was done. Today, people are always told to be the same and when they're here, they don't have to be. They get to do what they want to do. And that's like pretty rare. It means a lot to us. It's important to also bring it back down to the, bring it back down and focus on the ground level and focus on the smaller communities smaller companies and just the environment that you're personally around and to be able to make an impact on it in a positive way. It's, it's bigger than skateboarding. Like skateboarding is where it starts. It's more than just doing tricks. Life lessons. Skateboarding has brought not only you know kind of confidence and joy and fun and athleticism but a family. It seems like love and fun and inclusiveness have all come back into skateboarding. That's where it started. You're in search for the stope. That's all skateboarding for me was about for the longest time, just going from session to session to session, just trying to find that right session. This is where my stope comes from. And this is what makes me a healthier individual. 
I don't think people know what they have, just how special this place is. Man, I, I can't speak higher about what, how good that is to see that in, in this community and to see that in this place. That used to be just a, <laughs> a dilapidated old uh, hardware store. When something's meant to be, it will be. That's all I knew. This was meant to be. Who knows how long it will be here? Who knows if I'll be the one running it that long? I'm really good at being the guy that creates things, teaches others how to do it, and walks away. I don't think I'll ever fully walk away from this place, but I really hope that I can pass it on to the next generation. Everybody look what's going down. Yeah, that's why we're here. My favorite thing about HMI Skate Park are the people and the good time skating. Not only for myself, but my girls get to be involved in skateboarding and it's safe and awesome. I've been with my really good people over here skateboarding and yeah, yeah. My favorite thing about HMI Skate Park would be the people that work here. Is that homemade? The environment. My favorite thing about HMI Skate Park is the community and the, and the, the jiu-jitsu. People.